All right, what is going on, 5.9 Gaming? Where you didn't hear, today, me and the other creators within this video are going to be taking a look at your submissions for the fan-made Zenkai for Vegeta Family. So firstly, I wanted to take the time to thank everybody for your submissions, for taking the time to make a potential Zenkai that could happen, for putting the thought into a realistic picture of what we could see for Zenkai Awakening. And for those that haven't gotten a chance, be sure to go ahead and provide your submissions for other future fan-made Zenkais because we really do enjoy seeing what you guys put together, what you guys think of, and just overall what your expectations are for Zenkais. It helps put a picture together for what should we see and what the community wants to see. Now for myself, I'm going to be taking a look at Mr. Depressing's submission for the Yellow Super Vegeta, a very old unit at this point, but a huge fan favorite, a shining moment for good old Vegeta. So I'm really excited to take a look at this. As you can see here, I have his non zenkai version on the left side maxed out because we did ask for stats at Zenkai 7 1400%. So let's go straight into it. So. As I mentioned, Yellow Super Vegeta, his Zenkai ability is going to be increase the following stats of characters that are both Element Yellow and Tag Vegeta family, following the similar trend to all Zenkai Awakened units during battle. He's going to get 35% to, to Strike Attack, 40% to Base Blast Attack, 35% to Strike Defense, and 40% to Base Blast Defense. So, makes sense, your prominent stat, offensive stat, is going to be Blast, so it's going to be the 40%. And his primary defense is Blast, so it's going to be 40% to that. And his new stats maxed out. His Blast attack is going to be 283k, Strike attack 245k, Strike defense at 155k roughly, and Blast defense roughly 160k. So comparing it to his current set of stats, boy oh boy Super Vegeta, you are getting quite a buff. And it's well deserved. Those are more modern stats. And I do like that he made his defenses not overwhelmingly oppressive because Zenkais are very strong for sure. But I think it's about time that we introduce some sort of weakness to Zenkai Awakenings. They shouldn't be 100% perfect. There should be some aspect of it that you could take advantage of with your non Zenkai counterparts because within our current meta, a lot of units just feel obsolete because Zenkais are just so good and so perfect. So the lower defenses being completely maxed out are a perfect example of that. So I do like that. Uh, what do we got next? So main ability, let us scroll down and take a look at our current main ability. All we do is we get an ultimate, that being the final chase card. So now what's going to change is we're going to gain 30 key. We're going to do 50% additional damage and heal for 20%. So what I like to call the holy trinity of a main ability being you gain a card, some key and some sort of buff. So this is perfect. I can see this 100%. A lot of new Zenkais where the old version's main ability did not provide any key to use the card now do. So this makes 100% sense to me and I like it quite a bit. 50% damage inflicted for 20 timer counts is pretty high but respectively appropriate for a unit of this caliber, especially the heal, quite nice. His new changes to the arts card. So the first change is going to be on the blue card so we're going to be scrolling down here. Before it deals major impact damage and the enemy takes 10% additional blast damage once hit, this is now going to change to... oh. It's still going to be the same multiplier, major impact damage. I would assume that Zenkai may raise this to a different multiplier just to power it up because it is the final flash. It is a pretty iconic moment here. So that I would imagine this would go up and it's going to be inflicting enemy with attribute downgrade 30% of the blast damage received for 20 timer counts. So you want to increase the additional blast damage received by the opponent. So I can see it going beyond 10%. 30% seems appropriate. So I agree with that. His green card is going to change. It is previously 15% to blast damage inflicted for 15 timer counts with a reduction of the cost for 10 timer counts. Now it's going to change to 35% to blast damage inflicted for 20 timer counts and minus 10 to own blast art cost for 10 timer counts. Yep. Makes sense to me. Just keep buffing up what it currently is. 35% is quite high. So you're pro you are basically generating a scenario where you can make this unit overwhelmingly powerful. You are putting the blocks together for once all the pieces are there, he's going to have a very high potential for dealing damage. So I can see this makes 100% sense. It looks like he's also changing the ultimate. So before major impact damage, 30% to own key recovery for 10 timer counts. Now it's going to do massive impact damage. So increase to the multiplier here. 
40% to own key recovery for 20 timer counts on hit. So that is a 10% buff to what it is before and 30% to damage inflicted for 10 timer counts. I can see that 100%. A lot of ultimates provide that that really quick damage inflicted buff just for the use of the ultimate. Uh, LF Super Saiyan 3, for example, does that. A lot of units do this, so I can see that 100%. And inflicts enemy with attribute downgrade minus 80% to health restore. I like that quite a bit, especially because this is the Vegeta that fought uh, the second form Cell, who is a regen unit. So trying to stick with the, uh, the I guess, authenticity of the unit, taking away some of that healing from a regen unit. I like that. That's pretty damn cool. So now we're going to be taking a look at the passive. So the very first passive for Vegeta before... Blast damage inflicted according to the number of timer counts elapsed with the current character up to 70%. So it used to be 5, 10, 15 timer counts, which is a very long time for a unit to be in the battlefield, especially considering our current meta. So um, a lot of Zenkai Awakenings that have this sort of thing tend to focus on reducing the amount of counts that are required to start earning these passives. We can see this in the Super Saiyan Blue Goku, for example. I'm pretty sure... Um, his passive to gaining some additional damage done, um, all banked on timer counts uh, within the match. Not with the character necessarily being there, but a certain amount of timer counts having to pass. But anything like that, they tend to slash it away. So it looks like our friend has done the same thing. As opposed to five timer counts, it's now two. As opposed to 10, it's now four. And opposed to 15, it is now six. So makes 100% sense. Six timer counts to get the upper echelon of your overall damage. Makes 100% sense. It is not quote unquote too long, but at the same time, it's not too short either. So I agree with this. I can see this 100% for sure. That's pretty cool. Second passive Intimidate, Blast Defect, a Blast Defense Down. Inflict enemy with attribute downgrade plus 20% to blast damage received for 10 timer counts every time this character enters the battlefield. This is now going to change to inflict all enemies with attribute downgrade plus 20% to damage received for 25 timer counts every time this character enters the battlefield. Reduce damage received by 30% for 25 timer counts upon entering the battlefield. That's pretty cool. I like this. It went from just being one enemy to everybody, which is nice. And it went from blast damage to damage received. So he basically upgraded everything. Everyone gets hit with this and it's all forms of damage. I like that quite a bit. Reduces damage received by 30% for 25 timer counts, which is pretty cool. Um, combining that alongside his defensive stats, I guess it works pretty well hand in hand with making him a little bit tankier. So um, it's a good thing he didn't make his defensive stats overwhelmingly high to like the 170k mark. Otherwise, he's going to be a solid all around unit for doing everything at that point. So now we're going to be taking a look at the new passives introduced as part of his Zenkai. Zenkai 3, he's going to get, applies the following effects to self as well as allies, Vegeta family, or Super Saiyan upon landing a blaster strike card. 10% to damage inflicted by 24, 20 timer counts, and restores own key by five. I like this, mainly because it follows the trend of a lot of Vegeta family units. As you may know, the purple Super Saiyan blue Vegeta, he's able to provide a damage inflicted buff for every card that he lands. And he, the LF Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta does something similar as well. So this this trend of Vegeta family units all about powering up everybody for landing card arts uh, is pretty cool. I like that he continued this. And it's nice that this also works with Super Saiyans because this unit is primarily on the bench for Super Saiyan units. And it's nice that there's a focused passive for that tag as well, not just Vegeta family. And now the second passive as Zenkai 6 applies the following effects upon to self when entering the battlefield. Gain 40 key, increase own card draw speed by one level, cannot be taken away, and increases key recovery by 20%. I like this. I noticed that there's not too many damage inflicted passives. It looks like he wants this unit to be somebody that you build up towards. So the six timer counts, the main ability, as well as the unit doing additional damage for landing every card arts makes sense. You work towards Vegeta being this very, very strong unit. I like this. I like units that have to build up to it just because you kind of work for this character being very, very strong. It makes sense and it feels like a healthy unit. Now let's take a look at why he designed him this way. What made you decide to make the character the way you made it? I wanted this unit to be a type of unit that can stall for ally switch count to go down while also encouraging the user to stay in the field longer, while also major damage to the opponent as well as slightly boosting allies damage. This could seem a bit oppressive, but I think this particular version of Vegeta deserves it, as it was one of the, his defining moments as a character, and I have a certain attachment to the whole scene itself. So I agree with you. 
I like what you did with the character. Um, if the objective, though, is to help reduce ally switch count by being this dominant force on the battlefield, I think it would be appropriate that he has some means of reducing ally count. Um, Vegeta family units tend to do a very good job with green cards, and I guess you could have thrown that within his green card. Maybe his green card could reduce ally sub count by two, something like that. That would be pretty cool. And what role do you see the character in their teams and how do they fit the current and potential future meta that you see? A unit that can stall time for allies to come back while also encouraging the player to stay in the field for long periods of time to stack enough damage buffs and debuffs to be oppressive enough but not too oppressive. So there is a clear focus on making sure that this unit is not only a very, very strong unit but also a unit that isn't going to be overwhelming. He didn't want the Zenkai character to be just so beastly oppressive that he's going to be just destroying everybody. So I like this quite a bit. I think overall as a Zenkai unit, this is a healthy version of a Zenkai unit. And I think he's pretty darn cool. I like it quite a bit. I thank you for your submission. And now we're going to hand it off to the next person in line taking, at, uh, taking a look at your next submission. Thanks, Ryudin. Hey, guys. Palmzo here, and I'm going to look at the second submission for this video. And I felt that Vegeta family needs a really good red, so I was looking at the red Super Saiyan Vegeta. First off, thank you Deathbore for your submission. I really like it. I think that it's well thought out and we're going to go through it right now. So obviously, as you can see, we're Zenkai red Super Saiyan Vegeta, and he's increasing the stats of characters that are both red and Vegeta family, so I'm guessing since he is a little bit more strike focused, he will have the 40% strike attack and defense buff and a 35% blast attack and defense buff. So let's compare stats. He has now 2.237 million HP. Uh, before that he had, where is it? 2.1 million, so it's not a significant buff, but seems okay. Uh, strike attack 294K, and I think now he is making him much more offensive, which I like personally. 205k blast attack, which is actually less than before. Okay, hey, <laughs> that's I guess that's not possible. But um, even if it was 10, 210k, I think the strike attack is more important here. Uh, we have 175k strike defense, which is a little bit higher, and we have 168k blast defense. So he's not super defensive, even though he's a defense type. But uh, he is very, very strike attack focused. So let's have a look at the main ability here: pure evil. Minus 15 to own strike costs for 45 timer counts. So he basically tripled the time that it, <laughs> the strike cards are cheap. <clears throat> Restores key by 50. That is new. And increases card draw speed by one level for 20 counts. Changes all blast cards that are drawn to strike that are drawn to strike cards after five counts. Holy crap. So this is an early game juggernaut unit. Honestly, this is crazy. I like it though because I like to play rather offensively. And this really, really just kind of fosters this offensive play rather than just being passive and waiting a lot of times. Let's see the art ca arts cards. So strike cards inflicts enemy with attribute downgrade minus 25% to key recovery for five counts. That might be, I think three counts probably would have been enough, but five counts is, that's gonna be annoying. Especially if you're chaining three or four strike cards with the card draw level and the cheap cards, that's gonna be really annoying to deal with. Big Bang Attack deals massive explode damage, inflicts enemy with attribute downgrades 20% to strike damage received for 20 counts. So just a slight uh, increase from the 15 counts that we have here. And the green cards restores health by 15% and cancels uh, abnormal conditions and attribute downgrades plus restores key by 20. I've seen a lot of submissions increase the health restore by, tw uh, by 20% and then cancel on attribute downgrades and abnormal conditions, but he gives 20 key which is really cool because it's kind of a healing green card and that just kind of works with that. All right, let's have a look at the first unique. Uh, and you can already see here, the uniques are very short. I think this here, all these paragraphs would be one unique for Vegito Blue. So the first unique would uh, change the name to does a machine like you ever experience fear? And um, he would get 50% strike damage from the battle start for 55 timer count so it's a slight increase for both but it cannot be cancelled thank you for that reduces damage received by 20 percent when he enters the battlefield cannot be cancelled and that's also without a penalty some characters have 20 percent damage reduction with a three timer count penalty and 40 percent damage to androids cannot be cancelled sounds good doesn't it second unique 
Um, 15% to damage inflicted for 10 counts when he the enemy uses a strike card. I didn't even know he did that in the first place. Um, the following effects also occur upon landing a strike arts hit. Randomly destroys one enemy card and 15% strike damage inflicted for 10 counts. Yeah, I like it. It's kind of like Champa with, uh, with the blast card, except that, I mean, Vegeta did it first. He's the OG. I like it. It's a slight increase. It's not crazy, but it's still something that's useful. Um, we're going to have a look at the unique unlocked at Zenkai 3. It's called Unexpected Savior in reference to how him of all people came to save the day when Goku was being hurt by the virus. I like how he actually even thought about why he named the uniques the way he did, which is really cool. Um, if a battle member with attack Saiyan is defeated, which fits, you know, Goku being defeated, then the following effects will occur. 60% to key recovery for 10 timer counts when this character enters the battlefield cannot be canceled. Minus 10 to substitution count activates once and minus five to substitution count whenever he leaves the battlefield three times. So if you're lucky, let's say, and your character gets defeated and it's not Vegeta that's coming back, you basically have instant, instantly have two characters back that you can switch. And then he gets the Android 21 passive where you know, when he swapped out, he just needs five counts to stand by. So if you do one combo, you already have him back, which is cool. What would the second unique look like at Zenkai 6, the second new one? It's the third Super Saiyan, obviously, Trunks and Goku. If there's a battle member with attack Saiyan or Super Saiyan, the following effects will occur. Reduce damage received by 20% for 10 counts when the character enters the battlefield. Minus three to own arts cards cost, which cannot be canceled. Now imagine, Pairing that with the main ability with this. You basically pay one key for a strike card. And um, draw a special move card uh, when this character enters the battlefield once. So basically he gets to heal with a green card and gets some key back. So, I mean, strike cards for one key is a little insane, but... I mean, seeing as we have characters that do other crazy stuff, it's not out of the question, right? So what made him decide or made them decide to make the character the way they made it? Um, saying, I really do enjoy the burst characters like Blue Kaioken Goku or Yellow Kaioken Blue Ku. Plus this guy is pretty old, but his passive could become really impressive. And the role in the meta currently and in the future uh, would be a burst down character that also allows for a lot of switches and vanishes. With a little bit of last and potential, I think he'd be great for Vegeta family since many of them are blast characters, so it needs a strike focused unit as, as well. I believe he isn't too powerful to break the meta, but enough to not be mediocre and irrelevant like the new purple Super Saiyan Vegeta. Yeah, so the way I see this unit is he would have two really good teams, which would be Vegeta family and Super Saiyans. I'm not sure how well we, he would perform on a Saiyan team, but I think it would still work. Uh, the thing is that he buffs red and I believe Vegeta family so I'm guessing, yeah, Vegeta family and Super Saiyans with the crit buffs from Bardock and you have enough Zenkai uh, Super Saiyans to just complete that team. I really like this unit. It's very offensive, but he still has, you know, a little bit of extra pizzazz, you know, some extra secret sauce with the, the standby count when one Saiyan is defeated. And I think overall he's, he's actually now becoming more of a melee type than a defense type, but I don't mind that at all. And with that said... I will move on and hand it over to the next creator. Bye, everybody. What is going on, everybody? Naz Darachi coming at you again from 5.9 Gaming with another fan-made character Zenkai What If kit review. So we've been doing these community-made submission reviews for a few episodes now. I know it's bled over from Dokin. It's actually been a pretty neat idea, and I just wanted to thank everyone that did submit information for all these that we've done so far. Hopefully, if we haven't gotten to yours, we can get it on screen as soon as possible. I know we are rotating through them pretty reliably here, and again, thank you to everyone who's thrown one out. So today, I will be covering Vegeta Family, a what-if character from the Vegeta Family team build, and what would happen, what their kit would look like if they were to receive a Zenkai. I don't quite know if I'm going first or last in the progression of this video. I know there'll be three different character kit reviews. So in case I am going first, welcome to the video. Hopefully you will subscribe, hit the like button, and toss a button click on that subscribe bell so we can see you again on all of our future up and coming exciting content. 
and you should still do that in case I'm finishing the video, but I'll have a little outro on the end just in case it happens to be me. So without wasting too much more time, I wanted to bring up a kit review that was submitted by Golisaku. I have seen him around on Twitter, on Twitch, in the YouTube comments, all over the place. It's a regular and, you know, a fan that, you know, I want to throw you a bone, get you your kit up on screen. But again, thank you to everyone else who submitted them as well. We will continue to rotate through these, so keep on submitting them. Gives us something fun to talk about. So we'll also bring up the old version here, so we can check out kind of the new old. But Golosaku has done me the efforts of putting a lot of that information on screen already. So it'll make our lives a little bit easier. Now again, remember this is hypothetical. We do know that the yellow Super Saiyan God Vegeta just got announced as Zenkai. We'll probably be getting that, well, I don't know, as of, you know, when this video is being published. But for me, it's probably about, like, 18 to 20 hours we'll have him coming out. So he's a little bit more centered around God Key and movies as opposed to Vegeta family. But hopefully, the Vegeta family can make some type of strong comeback. I think them... GT and like the OG Dragon Ball Saga and Super Warriors are some of the teams that are furthest behind at the moment. But Vegeta family, not too far off of being competitive. They just need a few more tools. So I'm going to stop wasting time talking about general Vegeta family concepts and dive right into this character kit review. So again, thank you, Golasaku. Of course, we have the Super Saiyan Sparking Red Vegeta here. What is their Zenkai ability? Basically, what's it going to buff? Element Red and Tag Vegeta Family. It makes perfect sense. Again, you know, this is a very Vegeta Family-centered unit, so it would make sense that he would buff his own color and, you know, that tag specifically, as opposed to ones like Saiyans or Super Saiyans. What are the new stats maxed out at Z7, 1400%? So I'm going to assume <clears throat> this is a typo right here because his health is already 2.1 million where it stands... So again, 2.43 million would be a little bit of an upgrade, you know, almost half a million, but not quite. And you know, whatever other Z abilities you can get, like from the new Saab Coat Vegeta, maybe buff that up a little bit, would help him out. Remember, he's also a defense type, but he is slanted towards strike arts over blast in terms of what he's more effective with. So he's got 260k strike attack which is an improvement, like 30,000 over what his stats currently are at this point in time, but not as high as some of the other Zenkai units we've seen recently. Again, you can attribute to that to him being a defense type. He's not going to have quite as high offensive stats, but his defenses got a nice upgrade here to 185k and 182k, which is, you know, 20,000 or more roughly being bumped to those stats. So that's going to be a very beneficial you should notice that with him. He'll be able to take a lot of hits in this version here. 250k blast attack as well, which arguably is even more significant a leap than the addition to his strike attack here. I mean, you get almost 43,000 improvement here and about 30,000 improvement on the strike attack from his old non Zenkai version. Still pretty competitive. Assuming that the health is a typo and it's actually 2.43 million, these stats would still be competitive currently the game right now so it would work out just fine what is their new main ability well he has also listed the old one here so just so we can illustrate the new and the old you know we got it up in both spots so the old version was minus 15 to strike arts for 15 counts and increase arts card draw speed by one level for 15 counts the new one is similar but it's gonna have a little bit more going on it's minus 15 to own arts cost for 25 counts so he can get out tons of cards. Remember, this upgrades to all arts cards instead of just strike arts. So he will be able to get, again, a lot of cards out because he'll still have the arts card draw speed buff by one level. A little bit of a five second increase there and a 10 second increase on the arts card cost reduction. So beefing those up significantly. Also gets a 20% damage inflicted buff for 30 counts and restores key by 50. So at a glance, this doesn't seem too overwhelmingly powerful, but the global reduction to all the arts card, but the global reduction to all the arts card costs is actually pretty significant. 
And beyond that, you have four effects on one main ability here with a huge chunk of key being restored, damage buffs, card draw speed. It's kind of like a trifecta here. When you look at any new units coming out, Arts card draw speed is one of the things you definitely want to see on them to allow them to be in the field longer, to do more, be more effective. Like, raw damage is great, but the Arts card draw speed. I mean, let's look at the DBS Blue Gogeta that's going on right now. He's an exceptional unit, but suffers the most from not having any increased Arts card draw speed. So, this is a pretty good main ability. Again, nothing too overwhelming. But when you consider everything put together, it's actually doing a lot for the character to keep them effective. So let's jump down here to what arts changes to the arts cards would be made. The green card before restored on health by 15% and canceled abnormal conditions like paralyze, poison, bleed, you know, things like that. The new version would restore health by 20%, so bump it up 5%. And it would cancel stat debuffs as well as the abnormal conditions. So if you have any of those damage received from Striker Blast increased on you, you'd be able to get rid of those. Makes it a little bit better. And the healing is basically a one-fifth heal every time you use a green card. So that could be exploited pretty easily also. Blue card, Big Bang Attack. The old was Major Explode. Inflicts enemy with 20% to strike damage received for 15 counts. The new version is Major Explode still, and it just bumped it up to 30% for 20 counts. So just a little bit of an increase to the effect and five extra seconds on the timer counts there. Again, nothing too oppressive here. I feel like considering a balanced Zenkai is honestly better than if they just slaughtered this guy with effects and boosted stats all over the board. You know, it's fun to look at stuff like that. But in the practical application of gameplay, it does kind of suck when the Zenkais are way too overpowered. How would his first unique change? The old one's very simple, only one sentence. 40% to strike damage inflicted from battle start for 45 counts. The new version, 40% to strike damage inflicted from battle start, cannot be canceled. So get rid of the time limit and it can't be removed, period. As well as 50% to key recovery from battle start, which also cannot be canceled. So you'll be able to consider that as well when you've used his main ability to get the card draw speed. You will have the key recovery to hopefully, you know, charge step, sidestep, and to continue the combos even longer. How would their second unique change? The old version of Awakened Brutality was 10% to damage inflicted for 10 counts. When an enemy uses a red card, the falling effects occur upon you using a red card and landing it. Randomly destroys one enemy card and 10% to strike damage inflicted for 10 counts. The new version ups the 10% to damage inflicted to 20 counts when the enemy uses any arts card, so not just strikes anymore. The following effects also occur whenever you land a strike arts hit. You'll destroy one enemy card and 10% to strike damage inflicted for 20 counts. So just generally the same exact passive but with an increase to all the time windows where things stay effective, which is actually pretty good. It also removes that, sets it to like a global status here where any arts card will trigger the effect as opposed to only red. So again, you know, nothing too insanely oppressive compared to the original version, but it just kind of updates it so it's current with the times nowadays. What would the first unique at Z3 look like? Nobody kills Kakrat while I'm around. Applies the falling effects to self every time another battle member is hit with an enemy strike or blast arts card. Shortens his substitution count by one and reduces his damage received for 15% for 10 counts. Again, assuming he's a defense type, you're going to want to be able to sub him back in. And that defense buff means that if you've been hit a couple times, you might actually be able to live through some of the heavy hits like ultimate arts. Rising Rush, even if you're not in the most advantageous color situation. Color situation. Reduce damage received by 70% when changing cover until combo ends, which cannot be removed. That's pretty oppressive because it doesn't actually list an amount of times where this is effective. Like, this is just infinitely repeatable. That 70% increase combined with this reduction right up here 
is going to mean that you could potentially stack this and get almost you know 100% damage reduced. So I don't know how that would work. That might get a little bit OP when it comes to him being a defensive unit, but still no endurance mentioned so far. What would the unique unlocked at Z6 look like? So I guess it's true after all, androids do experience fear. Falling effects occur when an enemy has tagged android as a battle member, plus 30% to damage inflicted, which cannot be removed, and it inflicts enemy with no switching for five timer counts. That's, it's kind of interesting. So how, when did the lock-in happen? Does it happen when Vegeta comes into battle if he matches up against an android? Or did, does it just occur, you know, as soon as he hits the field, if they have an android on their team, period? So maybe it needs a little bit of refinement here, a little uh, adjustment to the tweaking of the wording here. But the five-second lock-ins can be exploited for really good results you can guarantee hit with your ultimate arts. You know, obviously this Vegeta doesn't have one, but you could switch, guarantee hit with ultimate arts, or you could use it to guarantee your rising rush lands on target without the enemy being able to swap out of the way. So again, mostly a defensive unit, but with the offense provided, the incredible defensive swap in debuffs, or I guess you know, debuffs for the enemy buffs for you, it would actually be pretty competitive the way that things are stacked up here. Let's see, the following effects occur to self when this character enters the battlefield, plus 20% to damage inflicted for 15 counts, and another key restore of 20. It's basically like a mini version of his main ability every time he enters the battlefield. You know, that also gives, what, like a 20% damage buff? And it gives you 50 key. So, same damage buff, a little bit shorter time, but a little bit less key also, just for swapping in. So, you know, that's going to combine with, you know, again, the swapping in from his defensive cover cut also. He'll get, get offensive buffs too, and a key restore. So, this is definitely someone you'll be throwing in front of a lot of attacks. So, as why did you, or what made you, sorry, decide to make the character the way you made it? Golisaku says, though Legends decided to class him as a defensive unit, he doesn't actually have any defensive passives or mechanics. So I decided to actually make him a defensive powerhouse with non-cancelable defensive buffs. With the amount of extra defensive buffs he's getting with the support of his Zenkai stats, he will definitely be a wall for the opponent. We'll also give him some sort of chance against powerful blue Saiyan Zenkai units he may be squaring up against also, like, you know, LF Namek Goku, for example, or Bardock. I also changed him to counter androids because, well, he's red, he would cover for Zenkai 18 pretty well, and canonically, this Vegeta is the one that fought, not, well, he did fight 18, he got his arm broken, but right before that, this is the one that fought Android 19. So, it does work, him being like an anti-android unit, right? He could also work as a counter against regeneration if the opponent brings a yellow cell or android 21, for example. He has no slouch when it comes to his attacking abilities either, bolstering card draw speed and reduced arts card cost. I feel like units nowadays can't be restricted to just one purpose alone, so he decided to bump hump his offenses too. But he didn't make his offenses too crazy. Remember, 260k strike attacks, not too insane. What role do you see the character in their teams, and how do they fit the current and future metas? He fits Vegeta family just to purely eat damage, and also do some. Depending on how Legends decide to handle power creep in the future, he should be around in the meta for a long time with the Zenkai stats and non-cancelable defensive buffs. So he kind of created this character not only to be able to survive in a world of powerful Legends Limited units, but to also be able to actually hold that defensive title when it comes to squaring up in battle versus other Zenkai units. Which, honestly, this game, the battles go by pretty quick these days when you're fighting with a lot of these hyper-powerful units. So having someone that could actually survive some pretty serious hits would potentially make the game more interesting as long as it doesn't drag the matches out too long. Speaking of that, I've gone on for about 15 minutes here. 
wanted to keep this relatively short. So in case I am on the end here, we do appreciate you checking out the videos. Continue to submit your ideas and other thoughts whenever we do these fan-made character Zenkais. And again, thank you to the other two creators who helped out in putting this video together. Again, I have no idea where I'm placed in all this. So I'm either sending you off to another one of the interviews or I'm saying goodbye. No matter what the case is, I hope you all have a great day. And I hope that I can talk to you again real soon. This is Nazdarachi. Peace out.